there, I'm Tracy. Thank you for joining me. I love to thrift and upcycle and I sold for over a decade. Now I just share what I've learned over the years with you and I'm sharing some of my hot items too that I used to sell. And one thing that people loved and always sold out were these. Now they have lots of different names. You can call them boho tassels, keychains, purse charms, zipper pulls, all kind of the same process. And um, I will show you step-by-step step how to make all three of these out of upcycled materials. Some of the hardware is new though. Now I'm going to start with this black leather tassel. I'm going to show you how to make the tassels, how to bead fringe, add feathers, things like that. And then I will be doing a vintage lace tassel and just sort of a whimsical zipper pull. Uh, whether you want to make them for yourself, make as gifts, make and sell like I did, um, I think you might find this tutorial kind of fun. I'm going to start with the black leather fringe purse charm, the long one. And um, there's a few things you'll need to get started. So first, I'm going to start with this lobster claw clasp. And it has a little swivel at the bottom. I'll try to link as many of these parts and pieces in my description as I can. Now this is half inch by five eighths inch. And then I will need this split key ring, keychain, and it's one inch silver split keychain. Here's what, how I bought it in a um, hundred piece set. I used to sell these. So, okay, so I'm starting with those two and then I need a wire cutter and two small needle, no pl needle nose pliers. Now these are kind of like jewelry making pliers. And a lot of times you can buy three in a set, like at Walmart or Amazon. Okay, so just another note about these lobster claw clasps. That's very hard to say. Um, if you just want to experiment and make one or two, maybe you have an old keychain laying around the house, or maybe you can find one at the thrift store that you can just use the parts instead of just ordering a bunch of things from Amazon. Um, if you just want to try it out and see how it goes and then maybe if you like it then you can order parts so however you want to do it now the leather that i use is from thrifted coats and jackets and a lot of times these have odors because they're expensive to dry clean and i think a lot of people you know they don't wash them or have them cleaned every time they wear them so a lot of times they smell kind of weird and need washed so when i sold I had racks of leather and suede, and if I had to dry clean or professional clean every single one, it would really cut into my profits. So I experimented one day through the jacket and suede jackets in the washer and the dryer, and they turn out just fine. I wash them on cold, and then I just dry them in the dryer. If you hang dry leather and suede, they get real stiff, so I stick them in the dryer. Um, if you want to wear it or sell the actual coat, do not do that. This is just for crafts. And once in a while, they'll have like a weird little water stain or something, but you just cut around that. So this is what I'm using, this leather jacket. Okay, so I'm going to need a square pattern for my tassels. And this one is five and a half inches by five and a half inches. Now yours can be any size that you want so I will just kind of lay it down on the jacket and see where I need to cut so I have plenty of room for two of these. So this little front panel is just the size I need. So I'm just cutting that out of the jacket. Okay, so now I'm just going to lay my piece of leather wrong side up because this is kind of a suede feel and I'm using chalk and it's a lot easier to mark the rough side than it is the smooth side. So I'm just going to trace around this pattern twice. I'll finish tracing that over here and then I'll do it again over here because I need two squares. I have my two squares traced and now I'm just simply going to cut them out.
Okay, now what I need to do is take my chalk again and a ruler, and from the top, I'm going to mark down three quarters of an inch, three fourths of an inch, and I'm going to do that on both sides. Now you can make two lines, but I can eyeball this. You just want to make a line three quarters of the way down from the top on both, both squares, of course. Okay, so now I just need to cut quarter inch fringe pieces all the way up to that line. Now you can be real precise and use a cutting mat and a roller cutter. I've done it both ways. I've done it like that. Or you can just cut it by hand if you don't have a cutting mat. Now this is a non-sewing project, so maybe you don't have a cutting mat. So I've actually cut this by hand more than I've used the cutting mat to cut the fringe. So basically, on both these pieces, you need to cut the fringe all the way over. Want the whole thing full of fringe. Okay, so the next thing I did was just cut out two little leather strips like this. They're four and a half inches long and a quarter inch wide. And now I need to take two jump rings. Now these are just jewelry making rings and I get mine on Amazon. I just, I sort of buy bits and pieces over time, whatever I'm needing, and then I kind of have a collection of them. Walmart, almost any place that sells like fabric, things like that, will have these jewelry making supplies. So I am just taking um, one of these strips, I'll do it to both, and one of the jump rings, and I'm using kind of a bronzy color, and I am just putting my strip through that ring and I want it approximately just kind of setting in the center. This is so we have a way to attach it to the purse charm and all the other things we're going to do. That way we have something sturdy and nice to use. So now I'll get out my hot glue gun. Okay, before I glue anything, I want to do one more thing to my little strip here. So I have the ring and I added a bead. It's a lot easier to add the bead now than when you're all done to try to fit a bead over that ring and everything. So do that now if you want a bead at the top of your tassel. So all I do is take that strip and fold it in half. Just line up the bottom basically. And then I'm going to cut just a little point so that it slips into my bead easy easily okay and so this bead has a nice big hole and so I just shove it through there and just pull it up to that ring so it's out of the way when we're working with it now I used to um, have trouble sourcing beads with big holes because they're actually hard to find in the stores but what I do is um, I look at other things at the thrift stores, like necklaces, of course. A lot of times they have beads with large holes, bracelets, and belts. Belts are one of my favorite things. I can find beaded belts quite frequently at the thrift store. And you cut those apart, and they almost always have the nice beads with the big holes. Okay, so now it's time to finish up the tassel with some hot glue. And um, here's something to put on your thrift list. A big plate for your um, hot glue gun. It never, okay, my stuff is a mess. I mean, it still works. I'm not going to replace it, but yikes. But my hot glue gun has a permanent home, and it's this plate. So for pennies, just find a cool little something to always keep your hot glue gun on so it doesn't ruin your table. Okay, let's get to gluing. So this little piece that we've been working on, 
I'm going to start by gluing the ends of this together. Okay. Now I'm just going to put a little dab of glue right at the very edge. And I am going to put the ends of this down on top and just hold that till the glue sets. And then I will just glue along here and roll it as I go. So I'll add some glue. You know, I want to be careful not to get too close to the top so that it looks sloppy and messy, but I want it as close to the top as I can get it so that it's secure. And then I'll just roll it. I only glued about an inch and a half there. Because as you know, if you use hot glue, it dries really fast. And um, if I glued the whole thing, I wouldn't have time to get all the way to the end before it dried. So I'll just keep adding glue as I go. And do that all the way to the end. Okay, so at this point, you can leave these exactly as they are. I have taken um, a thin strip of fabric, like animal print, you know, or something like that, and glued it around to jazz it up a little bit. But this time, I'm going to wrap a little bit of wire around it. Now, you can find wire like this at Walmart, any craft store, fabric store, I don't know what gauge it is because um, I don't have the original packaging with it anymore, but it's kind of a bronzy color. And I'm just cutting uh, with my wire cutters two six inch strips. You know, you can do as much or as little as you like. And I am just going to sort of wrap it around. That'll just give that little decoration and extra security as well. I'm just going to just wrap it around. No rhyme or reason, just however I think it looks cute. And then I will just take my little pliers and bend the ends and tuck it in to a wrapped piece. Now this has a pointy, you know, you don't want that snagging on anything. So I just tuck it in underneath where I wrap that wire. So now it just has a little bit of extra detail and I'm going to do the same to this one. Okay, so now we're just going to start putting things together and it's just kind of like putting a little puzzle together. These little jump rings I'll be using a lot or jewelry making rings, whatever you want to call them. So. I took a silver one out of my little bin here, and I want to attach this keychain to that clasp. So I am going to open this up. There's a little gap where it's not secured, and just open that up. Put the end of the chain on here, put the clasp on there, and close it back up again. Okay, so now we have that attached. So now I need something to attach the tassels to. And I have a lot of jewelry remnants, broken necklaces, chains, things like that. Now this one has a little clasp at the end, which is really nice. And I am just going to attach that to this ring. Now, see all this is silver. And if you've noticed, I've been using bronze a kind of a yeah bronze color I guess and I love doing that and that's intentional when I make something like this I try to use gold and silver or bronze and silver brown and black that way they go with so many things if you have a purse with gold embellishments it'll work and vice versa if you want to wear silver jewelry that day and you know you have silver on your other accessories so 
I will be using brown and black leather and silver and bronze colors. Okay, so now I'm taking one of the smaller silver rings and attaching the tassels to the chain. I already did this one, and I'll show you how I did that. I mean, basically, you open these up, slip, thing, slip things through, and put it on. So just open that up, put this ring on. And I think I'll put it like right here. Close the ring up. And now my tassels are attached to the keychain. Keychain, purse charm, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so here's what our purse charm is looking like so far. And I just want to add a couple pieces of brown fringe so that I can add beads to the fringe and have another detail. And so I have this faux leather coat and I cut two strips from it that are a quarter inch wide approximately and about 16 inches long. I'd like them longer, but you're kind of limited to the space you have on your coat. So mine are 16 inches. Okay, so now I'm going to take those two pieces of brown fringe and I don't want them perfectly even, so I'm going to pull one so that they don't line up at the bottom. And I am just going to attach it to this ring by going underneath, grabbing a little loop right there, and just pulling the fringes through and giving it a tug. See, just like that. Now faux leather like this is backed with fabric and it's a lot more durable than real leather. So you can really give that a good tug. If this was real leather, I'd have to be careful how hard I pull on that. Okay, so now we have that and I'm going to go grab some beads and put some beads on here. Okay, I'm just adding some sort of neutral rustic beads. I clip the bottom so that it comes to a point so that it goes into the bead easier. And I always keep a little pin handy because sometimes you have to, this one I don't have to, but sometimes you have to shove it through with a pin. Just be careful not to get beads that have too small of holes. I know from experience that will drive you crazy. Put it on and tie a knot in the bottom. Okay. Okay, so I have this kind of cool looking necklace and it already has a clasp on it. So I am just going to come to this side and attach it with a clasp to the keychain. Now, if you want to use this for a keychain, you'll want to do this differently because we're kind of blocking this. You can't put keys on it, but I'll be doing another one here in a little bit that will be a keychain and I'll show you the different way you have to do that. So, I this is too long. It goes way down to there and I don't want it that long. So I'm just going to take my wire cutters and clip it off where I want it. I think I want it clipped off about right here. Okay. And now I want to add this gold chain because I want to put charms on, that'll be the last thing I do, just add some fun little charms on this chain. So I need to go find a jump ring to add to this. Okay, I'm just going to use one of these gold rings. Open it up. Stick it in one end of the chain. And again, put it on to my keychain. Now, see, it's like a puzzle. <laughs> you just find places to put stuff. And the rings really come in handy and they're really simple to use. Looking pretty cool. Now I want to add some charms to this chain. And um, I have a whole little tray of charms to pick through here. 
and then we'll add feathers and then we'll be done. Okay, so my charms are mainly just jewelry remnants, broken necklaces, earrings that only have one earring, <laughs> not the match. So I'm going to use this leaf, this owl, and just this little medallion here. And these are all earrings and I have to clip the hook off and add a ring. Okay, so basically on each one of these, I will just clip this hook off. Okay, and then I'm going to add my own ring so that I can put it onto the gold chain. So I'll take a ring like this, open it up, slip it in the little hole. And then I'll go back to my purse charm. And I think I want, here, let me get a further away shot. Okay, so I put the smallest charm right here on the chain. Then I added the owl. And now I'm going to put the leaf at the very bottom. Just close that ring up. Okay, now I have my charms on. Okay, so I'm just adding three feathers. I already added two, and I'm adding them to the beads, and I'll show you how I do that. I just take a feather, and at the very end, just put a dot of hot glue, and then you just find the opening in your bead and slide it in. There it is. Okay, so you can take this and just jazz up an existing bag that you have by hooking it onto a side ring. Very cute. Okay, so here is a bag I've made and I actually have a tutorial for this. And I know a lot of you are, I have lots of bag tutorials on my YouTube channel and I know lots of you are making them and I love that so much. So if you are one of those that are making my bags, these are great little accessories to add to them. And if you list a keychain that's attached to your bag in your description, they sell so fast. People just love that. Now, this has a braided belt for a strap. I'm just going to clip it into that. But if you don't have anything like that on your bag or you're creating a bag, just find a little space to create some sort of loop to hook this onto. Just another fun detail. Okay, another idea for your um, charm is find a stretchy bracelet and just clip it onto that. And now you have sort of a wristlet keychain, hands free. Or if you have a hat with a hat band, clip it onto the hat band for some extra detail for a fun concert or festival. And one last thing. So you can hang this on your rear view mirror in your car. So what I would do is the little wires that we've been using on these, I would just clip a little piece of wire, put it behind your mirror and just kind of twist it and clip this onto it. Okay, so let's get started on the lace purse charm. And before we start cutting lace, we have to prep the clasp in order to have something for the lace to attach to. Okay, so for this one, I'm using the same size clasp as I did the leather purse charm, only I'm using bronze because I want this to feel vintage and antique. And I'm using wire, and again, I don't know what the gauge is. These are wires that are for jewelry making. Um, this wire is a little bit thicker than those, but not a whole lot. I want this to be fairly sturdy. So let's get going. 
Okay, so I laid some beads out in the order I want them to be on my clasp. Now, again, these are from broken necklaces, broken uh, bracelets, things like that, earrings. So I just have a ton of, <laughs> a hodgepodge of beads. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my wire and I'm going to cut 12 or 13 inches. I'm not going to, just with my wire cutter, I'm not going to need that much, but I don't want to get into this project and have it halfway done, have it beaded and realize I ran out. So I'm giving myself plenty to work with. And so the first thing I'm going to do is, now this was from a belt, I believe. It's just a round, bronzy looking um, hoop. And so I want to attach that to the bottom of this wire. And nothing fancy here. I'm just going to, let me get my pliers. I'm just going to wrap it around a few times so that it's nice and secure. Okay. And then I just want to take this little piece that's kind of protruding there. I just like to bend that around so that it wouldn't jab anybody. Make sure that it's nice and flush. Okay. So now I have that at the bottom. And now I am just going to bead these beads. Now this is where you don't have to have large holes because we've got a wire and you can use small holes. And so this is the order I want them. Actually, I think I want one more little one underneath this large bead. Let me go get it and come back. Okay. I just, oops, gosh, I dropped it. Okay. I just grabbed something like this so that the pearl can kind of set on something. Okay. So I have this. Here's the top of my wire. I'm just going to start beading. This is really fun. Once you get things picked out and laid out how you want them. Okay, so I have that at the bottom. Then I'm going to add, let me get a wider shot here so that you can see the whole thing at once. Okay, now I'm just going to continue putting my beads on. Isn't that cute? And I'll keep going. I have one with little rhinestones here. You know, teeny tiny, just plain bronze bead. Okay, I'll keep, I'll get these beaded and then I'll come back and I'll show you the close up of what it looks like. Okay, here's what we have so far. And now it's time to cut some lace. Okay, I have a little pile of lace here. I have some remnants. I don't know what that was. Maybe a skirt or something at one time. A little piece of a doily. Something. <laughs> this was a curtain, or this is a curtain. I've got from off-white, almost white, to a real dingy sort of ecru color, which will really make it look vintagey and old. This is a tablecloth. Now, if you want to sort, this is just a piece of bed sheet. I may do a little rag strip with this um, and I may use all of it. I may not. I never know until I start putting it together and seeing if I like how it looks. So if you want to find lace, I know it can be sort of tricky, but if you're thrifting, go to the home decor department where they have curtains and tablecloths and sheets and things like that. You can find lace curtains and lace tablecloths sometimes, but also lace dresses, lace skirts, lace shirts. So if um, you want something super vintage, I usually go to eBay. If you want a true blue like antique or vintage lace, something pretty exquisite, um, eBay has always been my source for that. Okay, so the first thing I did was I took one of each of my pieces of lace and I cut strips. Now, they range from 24 inches long to 28 inches long. I don't want them blunt at this tassel blunt at the bottom. I want it to be kind of scraggly. That's why they vary in length. 
And the width also varies from half an inch to about one and three quarter inch. And now I'm going to try and see if I like how a little strip of this bed sheet's going to look. So this is super simple. I will just snip off. I think I'll do a little less than half an inch. Just make a little snip and then rip it. Then you kind of have these strings. I just wind them around my hand like this. Okay. Okay, so now I have my lace strips all laid out here. And now I'm just going to kind of scrunch them together. And I need to put the ends of all of these through that large bottom ring on the keychain right here. And, you know, just do it the best you can because they're not all even. So I'm just going to feed them all through that hole. And then I'm going to pull all of them at once until we get to about the center of the strips. I think a little more this way. Yeah, I think that looks good. Gorgeous. Okay, I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so now I have everything in that ring. And mine's really long. You can make yours as long as you want. You can make it a lot shorter. Whatever suits your fancy. Okay, so I'm taking now, here's a piece of lace. I found one of my sturdier pieces of lace strips because I'm going to tie this tight and I want to make sure it's not going to break. So I'm going to slip it under this tassel and I'm going to come down about an inch and a half below the top of that tassel and I am just going to tie it in a tight double knot. And then I'll let the other, I'll just let the ends hang and blend in with the rest of the lace. Okay, so now what I want to do is where I tied that off right there, I want to wrap a pretty beaded wire around this part right here. So what I'm going to do is go back to my um, my wire that I've been using and I'm going to cut off about oh, maybe seven inches. So I have like a seven inch piece. And then I have this ratty little vintage necklace that it's all broken but I'm going to use the beads from this. So I'll just snip that thread and hope that they fit on my wire. They may be too small. Oh, they fit. So I'm just going to thread those beads loosely onto this wire. But what I have to do so they don't come off the other end is just take the end of the wire with my rounded little jewelry pliers here and I'm just going to make a little circle like that. It doesn't have to be perfect because it'll be pretty hidden once we start wrapping it around but that'll prevent the beads from falling off. See that? So I will just bead this. I'll bead it fairly loosely because if I smush them down on here and make it really tight it won't bend like I want it to around that tassel. So I'm just going to spend a minute and get that beaded. Okay, so I have all the beads on there that I want. I don't want them smooshed together like that. I want to be able to see a little bit of that wire. And so that's plenty. So now I have to do the same thing to this end. Just give it a little twist to make a circle so that the beads don't fall off. Okay. 
And now we're ready to wrap it around the lace tassel. And so I'm just going to sort of hold this, push this down at one end and wrap it around. Kind of watch my bead placement as I wrap it. And then this, these actually kind of meet where I started and where I ended. But I'm just going to take these and just bend them in and push them in. Okay, so now we have the little beaded wire right there. Isn't that cute? Now let's add some fun charms. Okay, so before I add charms, I've decided I don't want mine quite this long, so I'm just going to give it a little haircut, and I'm just going to find random pieces and cut it up at an angle. It just depends on what you want to use it for. I just want mine a little shorter. There. Oh, got some long ones over here. You just do whatever you want. There. Happier with that. Okay. So now what I want to do is add charms that are on a short chain and attached to this wire that we just wrapped around the tassel. And so first I need to find the charm. So well, I found the chain. It's just a broken necklace and it's in a bronzy color because I want it to look antique. And I have an extra one here in case I don't have enough of this. And then I found these are all just jewelry pieces and charms, a little earring here that I'm going to have to, it's a clip on earring. I'm going to have to take that clip off and it will leave me just the charm. And then I will have to take one of my rings here, my jump rings or jewelry making rings. And I have to add that to the charm. And I'll have to do that to each one of my charms. Now this one I'll have to add, this is a key, a charm. I'll have to add a larger ring to that. Now this is a part of a either a bracelet or a necklace, it's vintage. And this already has a ring. So you just kind of see what you have and work with what you have. So this already has a little ring and I don't have to add one to it. I'll have to add one to that. Now I'll have to add one to this. This is just a necklace pendant. And then this charm bracelet, um, the colors are wrong, but this heart was right. So I'll clip that off and add a ring to this as well. Okay, so I have five charms. And so I'm going to need five little lengths of this chain. And so I will just snip them with my wire cutters. And I, I can envision the size I want them, but let me measure for you. And I want them all different lengths because I don't want these to just lay perfectly straight across. So the first one I clipped is an inch long. Now, maybe this one will be an inch and a quarter, maybe three quarters of an inch. Mm, let's do another about inch. So now I have one, two, three, four, one more. I'll do this one a little, maybe another inch and a quarter. Okay. So now what I need to do, so I have my little chain links 
I have my little charms with their rings all ready to go. Now what I need to do is on each, you gotta have good eyes for this, <laughs> and good eye-hand coordination, because these are small. But what I'm going to do is take these little bronze rings again, open them up, and if you drink a lot of coffee like me and you're shaky, that doesn't help matters. And so I'm going to put one of these big rings at the end of the chain. I'll just close it up temporarily until I get them all done. And I'll do that to the rest of them here. Okay, so my each little chain has a ring at the end. And now what I need to do is add a charm to the bottom of the chain that we didn't put the ring. And this is why we put rings on the charms. So I'll take one here. I'll take this heart, open it back up, put the bottom of the chain on this one. You're so shaky. Oh, so embarrassing. And close that and I just butt them together this ring I don't over I used to sort of overlap it but um, they work just fine if you butt the end of the ring together so now this is what we have and I'm going to do that to the rest add each charm to the bottom of each chain okay now what I want to do is just put these on to the wire and I'll use this little ring at the top of the chain and I'll try to evenly distribute them around the tassel and I'll try to go high low high low let's see this is a shorter one mm. so yeah, just kind of lay them out how you want them. I'll probably put them on something like that. And so I will just take any charm I choose, find that ring at the top of the chain, find that gap, okay, and open it up and just find a spot on that wire to hook it. And close it back up. And there we have our first charm on there. Now I'm going to put the rest around and then show you what it's looking like. Okay, so you can jazz up a pre-existing bag, like this little crochet, and I'm just sticking the hook right through the crochet. Cute. So here's another idea. This is a purse where I actually have a tutorial, and I'll try to link as many of these purses that I'm showing you in my description as I can. And this has a little bit of lace in it, and boy, wouldn't that be cute, just attached to the strap. Now, this doesn't have, well, it has a hole up here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that fits perfectly. Otherwise, I was going to punch a hole down here. I'll go ahead and do that and show you while I got my hole punch. And so if you make these bags, it's so simple just to punch a hole into your strap if you're using a belt. Now, isn't that beautiful? Now, here's another purse I can add it to. Now, I didn't plan when I made this clipping a tassel onto it. So what I'm going to do is just take a fun little vintage brooch and pin it on. 
the strap, and then I can just clip this right to that. Fun, fun. Okay, so you just take a necklace of your choice. I'm going to use these pearl strands. You can use anything you want. And I'm going to use the clasp that's on here. You can, instead of, if you don't want this big kind of clunky looking clasp, you can just take a ring, like quarter of an inch or half inch, and wrap the wire around that instead. And then open it up with your pliers and hook it on. But I'm just going to use the clasp. And I could either put it there or make it a little more boho-y looking, a little more magnolia pearl, <laughs> and put it down. Here, I'll move this back. Down low, say you have a long sort of maxi dress. This would be really cute low like that. Okay, so the third thing I want to make is more of a keychain or a zipper pull. So I will show you the zipper pull first, and then I'll show you how to convert it into a keychain. So again, I'm starting with this one inch by five eighths inch lobster claw clasp, <laughs> and I'm using silver. And what I found were just some whimsical fun things that I had in my stash, like this fun friendship pin, this little Dalmatian dog, and this little bracelet, which has lots of beautiful beads, glass beads. This one has a bird in it. They're just really pretty. And then just a simple chain. Uh, well, it's not a simple chain. It's a beaded chain, but it has um, rings so that I can attach my charms to. So that's why I chose this. And I'll show you how I attach everything. Okay, for this one, I'm going to use a more heavy duty ring. Compared, these are the rings I have been using. And these are just a little bit thicker because if this is a zipper pull, I want you to be able to actually pull on it. So you clip this onto the zipper of the purse, and I'll show you that later. And then you use a zipper pull to unzip, and I want it to be durable, so I'm going with these um, heavier duty rings. And so what I need to do is just find a way to put a ring on every single um, charm and chain that I have. And these are a little harder to close up because they're thicker. Now, if the hole, like, see the hole on this dog's head? That would might be too little for my thick rings. So you just add another ring into that hole that's smaller and then add the thicker ring into the larger ring. <laughs> you know what I mean. See, so we kind of doubled up there. I'll just close it temporarily. We'll have to open that again, but I like to get things all prepped. Oops. Okay, I gotta do a do-over on that one. I'll be right back. Okay, so for this bracelet, I want it kind of folded in half when it sits on the keychain on the clasp. So I'm just going to put a ring in between a couple big balls here. Okay, so that it will hang like this. And now these, um, this chain is too long for me. I want to snip it about right here. Because I want it to be similar. I don't want one to be super long. And now what I need to do is just attach these charms to this chain. And I already have the rings on their heads or on the tops, the head of the dog. And I'm just simply going to open that back up, put it on the chain somewhere. And then I'll do the same with this friendship pin and I'll put it probably about right there. 
Okay, so this one's just easy peasy, but um, you could get so creative with what you add to this. Be really pretty purse charm with like rhinestones or jewels, things like that, different necklaces. So I am just going to open that ring that I added to this bracelet and hook my claw onto it, or my lobster claw clasp, my claw, and close it up. So I have that, that one on. I'll do the same to this. And that's all there is to it. How fun and whimsical is that? So this would just clip onto that little hole at the end of the zipper of your purse. Or if you want to do a keychain, I'll show you, it's super easy. Okay, so if this is for your personal use for a keychain, just find the ring on your existing keychain and just clip it on. Okay, and if, say you want to make and sell these as keychains, you can add a split ring keychain and just clip it on and people would still be able to get their keys on around that ring. Simple, simple. Now I'll show you what it looks like on a purse, on a zipper. Okay, so the one with the Dalmatian, I've added a few more charms to it, like some little cowboy boots and then this little colorful medallion. So this would make a great zipper pull for a tote or any purse. Just clip it on to a zipper that has a hole in it. And zip your bag shut. Isn't that cute? I keep saying, isn't that cute? It's almost braggy, but... <laughs> I just love these, they're so fun. Okay, so you can also use this technique to make boot charms. And so here's the belt loop. I took just an old necklace and cut it with my wire cutters. I left the clasp on and just attached it to itself. And now I can clip these on right there. Well, I'd probably want it more there. Now, you might want to do these a little bit smaller or a little bit lighter, maybe some feathers and beads. You can also hook this onto a belt loop or, okay, so I've made junk journals and sold them before. I actually have a tutorial for this one. I'll put the link in my description, but I've made a charm for the side here and what I did was opened this up, and it's all in the tutorial, opened this up and took my hole punch and punched a hole in order to hook this. And this one just has a lot more sort of jewel tones and a little more elegant looking. Okay, if you've made it this far, I thank you so, so much. You know, the creative possibilities with these purse charms are endless. And if you have a fun idea that you didn't see regarding the keychain, please share. We, um, we're a community here and we all learn from one another. I'm going to do a quick little slideshow at the end of this video. And they're all purse charms and purses that I've made, different ways to use purse charms. A lot of the um, keychains, purse charms are on the side of a purse, so you have to look sort of carefully. Have fun.